Alright guys, such Kramer here again today. Hope you're doing well and enjoying your day. So far, it's no secret that the skill gap here in Modern Warfare 3 and the general differential between the top teams and the lower teams is very substantial indeed. And the better teams will almost always, it seems so far this season, dominate the teams that aren't so good. Drazzle though says that many of the players on these worst teams are not even trying to get significantly better and are satisfied to get slammed week in, week out by the top team, saying that many of these guys prefer to play ranked and other things rather than even play any eights at all to try and take themselves to the next level. Is Draza, right? That many of these terrible players aren't even trying to improve. Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. First of all, I thought this is pretty crazy actually from this Ravens uh, scrim here. So again, nice little scrim leak for the Ravens. Now, we've seen a few players really experiment with using the streaks in an interesting way. So the cruise missile is better now, obviously, because, um, you know, he smashes it into a light pole here. But since the trophy is no longer stop the cruise, people have really been playing around with their cruise missile angling. We saw Pred do this the other day. I've seen Hixie do it as well here on this very map where you can bend it into this control point if you know what you're doing. Now TJ obviously tries to do that right here but it must be said somewhat unsuccessfully right. So maybe a bit more practice required but this is why I like kill streaks in the game because there is actually a skill gap in using the streak. This isn't necessarily the case. I mean even to be honest something like a lightning strike from back in Black Ops 2. There's still a skill gap in where you place it. Do you decide to use the ping to get the information and then kind of go on from there. So that's why I like streaks being allowed in the game is because some players are better at getting streaks but also once you get streaks some players will get more kills per cruise missile than others will because some practice more, some are better than it or better than it than other players. And honestly, if you're a pro and you're not going into custom games and practicing your like cruise missile lineups to kind of bend them like Beckham straight into some of these hard points and these control points, I think you're missing a trick to some degree. So we'll see if anyone does that going forwards. There's also this from Clay. I don't know if this is the technology of the future exactly, and obviously Clay's joking around and he took this off some, um, some Reddit page, I think actually, stole off PC Master Race or whatever, but have a look at this. Through the glasses, we can see, I mean, here we are on Dust 2 and Counter-Strike, we can see the Dust 2 map layout, and um, I think we've got some red dots here which seem to be implying where the enemies are. So, I don't know if this is ever going to come to CODs, but theoretically, somebody could wear, be wearing glasses with basically wall hacks on the glasses, right? Okay, maybe it wouldn't show wall hacks precisely, but it might show, you know, areas where the enemies could be. I don't know, right? But that's a very... Like, honestly, the technology on this, if it even exists, which it clearly does, is going to develop to some degree. And we might arrive to a point where we need to start checking players' glasses or even contact lenses because they might be using some sort of cheating overlay, which would be wild. I don't think it's possible that. But, um, you know, imagine it was possible online, right? Because right now, a monitor cam is the way to stop people cheating because if they have to show what they see on their monitor, then they can't, you know, have wall hacks, right? Because otherwise, we would get to see that. But if they can play from home with a pair of glasses on, they give them the hacks through that. How is that possible to please? So, I don't know. Just a glimpse of the future, I think, there. Do you know what you guys think this is from Mohawk as well? Because he tweeted this out yesterday. Illy is woke AF, GG's. So, I don't know what this means, and uh, intrigued to hear your speculation on exactly what he's trying to get at here in the comment section, right? just because Illy is gone from the Seattle Surge, from their starting roster, Brezzy is coming in. As a recording, they have not confirmed that Illy's even gone. They've just confirmed that Brezzy's in. We know that Illy's gone, that's the general belief. We probably know why Illy's gone from the starting roster, as unfortunate as that is. But the question is, is Illy even still there? Is he benched? Is he potentially going to come back at some point? Is he dropped? Like, is he released from the organization? Is he back in Canada with his family? Like, we just don't know any details on this. The most recent tweet that Illy actually did was after the major when he said that, you know, it was just caffeine and nerves and all this type of stuff. That's the last we've heard from Illy, and not just the last we've heard from Illy, but it's the last we've heard on Illy, generally speaking. Serge have said nothing, none of his teammates have said anything, so we don't know what the situation is. Obviously, we're wishing for the best. But um, this kind of implies that he played some sort of chal, right? I mean, I don't know, like, GG is Illy, I don't know, maybe did Mohawk and Illy play some sort of chal yesterday? We haven't seen him on stream, I don't believe. So we don't know what's going on right now, but yeah, just hoping for the best, but also hoping that Surge can 
get him back at some point. Because I do like the players on Surge and I would like to see them succeed. But I didn't think it was going to happen at the start of the season with the roster they put together. And, you know, I don't think it's going to happen now getting rid of Illy. If they actually want to be their best level, I think that they need Illy back in the team. But it doesn't feel like that's going to be happening quite now anytime soon. But there's been lots of debate over the last few days. What is the best form of practice? Obviously, the pros scrim. That's the best practice you can get. Play as a four-man team up against other four-man teams in the pro league or even top challenger teams. That's the best practice. But, you know, you can't scrim all day necessarily. Some teams do, you know, even up to like three scrim sets a day, especially on the lead up to the World Championship. But often... People say that by the time you get to your third scrim set, it can be somewhat counterproductive because you're not fully locked in as you were previously. So, you know, two scrim set today is kind of what the pros tend to go for. But outside of that, that was clay, by the way. They got spot on there by Scrappy here in ranked. Well, I'm guessing this is ranked anyway. We've got Bose on this team. We've got, um, you know, Nameless on the other team. And lots of pros have been playing this instead of playing Money 8s or just 8s or whatever you want to say. BPL 8s were popping off at the start of this game. And that's usually how it goes before Ranked comes out. Ranked comes out and players decide to go over and generally play that instead. Same thing with the BZ and even the likes of Simp and others. You know, Simp has never been a man that really likes to play eights much. He doesn't think that it helps him improve because in scrims, you're playing in a pro setting pretty much and therefore you're practicing what you play in the matches. Whereas in, in eights, for example, you're not playing with your full team. Players make some plays that arguably they shouldn't be making and there's all sorts of debate on whether eights actually improve you or not. But Draza definitely believes that they do and that's been the case before. And to be honest, I think that this is true, at least for Draz. Like, it's no secret that Draz grinds eights more than anybody else and grinds the game more than anybody else and wants to play eights more than anybody else. And it does seem to help him, right? Like, any time that Draz has been weak in a certain game mode, he decides, you know what, I'm going to play S&D 8, I'm going to play Respawn 8, and I'm going to cry the hell out of it. And then he turns up in a couple of weeks time and he's much better at that game mode. And um, I don't think that's a surprise, right? I think it's actually a pretty clear cause-effect situation. So Draz has said a few days ago now, ranked kill eight so bad, I've lost full. And um, such as like, look, okay, after the Super Bowl, we'll get it back. We'll get some players back in here to play again. But it doesn't seem like that's happened because Draza says the following everyone is so bad but doesn't want to play eights because you know people are on the content grind they're on the ranked play grind and i totally get that right there's nothing wrong so as i'm concerned making some good content playing ranked but does draza have a point some of the players in this league are terrible compared to some of the top players not saying they're bad individually as in you know terrible talent wise but you know they're clearly levels behind where some of the top teams are there are plenty of teams in this game that have been getting you know fried since day one and have therefore had to make multiple changes there are a few teams that are really good. I mean, Toronto, obviously. FaZe, obviously. Optic, we saw them get top three. Subliners, bit of a question on that one. But, you know, it's a few players that you might expect to be grinding. You know, let's say Draza and FaZe came top six, top eight or something. You could well imagine Draza is playing more COD than ever before in those next couple of weeks to try and get better, try and improve. And it's been a general feeling around the scene for a little while now that certain players are pretty happy. I wouldn't say maybe even complacent is probably the right word. Players are like, maybe they're top six, they're top eight in that kind of range. They're getting a decent salary. They probably know that their team isn't really going to be good enough to ever win an event or win the champs or whatever. So, you know, they're kind of satisfied staying where they are. But I don't think that's a good mentality. If you want to get better, if you want to get one of the top teams, you've got to grind harder. You want your team to improve. Also, make more prize money at the end of the day as well. And then get signed to a better team in the future. Right? I feel like a lot of pro players don't really have the right mindset when it comes to this type of stuff. And whether you can put that down to not playing eights or not, that's another question. But I do think it's somewhat part of it. Draws are saying, look, some of these players, not only are the players terrible, but, you know, the teams are terrible. And yet they're not really trying to improve. They're not hitting me up and saying, look, Draws, let's get eights running. You know, let's get some practice in because, you know, Draws could get eights together with some quality players. Draws, of course, himself a quality player. So, you know, as he says, whatever it takes to try and be the best. Other players potentially don't have that mentality, right? And this is the way the league stands at the moment. I think that it's clearer than ever that there is a massive discrepancy right now between the better teams and the worst teams. In previous years, we've seen teams like Florida, for example. These are all the classic examples to me. Seasons like Cold War and certainly Vanguard. I remember Florida. To be fair, Vanguard in Florida or v Florida in Vanguard, they made a few changes. But quite often, right, they would have a team that would be pretty bad. Let's be honest. Our mutinies were not great. But they would eventually get some sort of upset win. They'd either fluke a win against Optic or maybe it wasn't a fluke because Optic always lost to mutineers. But they would get a victory and it was the same story for other teams 
teams down there at the bottom of the league previously that they'd get a win and they'd think, well, maybe we're not so bad. Our scrims are going well because scrims are always going well for every single team and we're getting slammed in most games, but we did just beat these guys in a game five, so maybe we're actually quite good. But um, I think the general thing was that back then in those games, the skill gap wasn't as high as it seems to be in this game, certainly from a teamwork standpoint. And maybe also the teams at the top of this league are just more stacked than they previously were. So the discrepancy between the best and the worst seems bigger on this game. I mean, how many 3-0s have we seen so far this year when a top team just, you know, piss slams basically a team they're meant to beat? And I have no problem with that because it proves to that bottom team, okay, yeah, we ain't any good. We've got to improve. And whether that is make a change or whether that is maybe just grind the game more would be a decent outcome. But it seems to Draza maybe that plenty of these teams in the kind of, let's say, 6 through 12 range aren't really that committed to getting better. Maybe they're scrimming a decent amount, maybe they're playing a lot of ranked, but, you know, maybe as Draza thinks that 8 is the way to try and improve your individual play, Draza certainly experienced that during his career. And there's other players like Slasher and others that would like to get it going, but it seems difficult for them to even get 8. 8 of the pro players out of the 48 to agree to doing so, and maybe you understand it for some of the top teams. Teams. But for the teams lower down, you'd think that they'd be, you know, chomping at the bits, you would think, to play eight and get that running again to try and improve. Does not seem to be the case at all. So which players exactly is he talking about? Very much interested to your thoughts in the comment section below. I mean, look, we've got basically everyone's playing ranked at the moment, right? So he could be talking about all sorts of players. I do think this is kind of funny here from Vickle that, um, you know, he dropped the 3-0 when they threw it up to go online and then they got 3-0'd back on LAN, which was, uh, you know, so Cloud Vickle is officially back. We'll see if, uh, uh, of course, heretics can turn it around when things get back in business. Speaking of Vickle, though, thought this was quite fascinating, really. Is the CDL in a golden age of international talent? Now, I do believe that the loss of the London team, the loss of the Paris team, at least in region, has affected the scene to some degree. And I think there are better UK players than we currently have in the league because, you know, there aren't really, there isn't much representation from the UK at all compared to how there used to be. I think there will be more so over time. I do think the loss of a London team has hurt that to some degree. But to be fair, I mean, look, we've got quite a few French players in the league, of course. Optic, you know, Canadian in Dashi, and then, of course, Pred from Australia. Ultra is a nice mix as well. Then we've got the full Spanish team on the Heretics. So, you know, nearly 40% of starters from outside of the US is actually pretty cool and it's probably the best that it's really been in a long time. I still think it could be more and, um, you know, having Golden Age and CDL in the same sentence still, you know, rubs me a little bit the wrong way. But very much enjoyed your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care and I'll see you next time. We're taking host. Fire got the best shit on this server. <laughs> <laughs> I watched that guy literally go into a running simulator online. He's like slamming us. <laughs> oh man, I literally squared up with him. He literally just laughed at me.